Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, and other organisms watching as well, greetings to all the bacteria on your body and inside of it digesting the recently consumed food for you. Guess what? It's Monday, May 19th, 2014, and welcome back to Fun Day Monday on the Day 9 Daily, where normally we learn to be a better gamer, but on Mondays we dick around. In today's Fun Day Monday topic, I had a simple request, one that resulted in some of the worst submissions I've ever received. I requested that you give me a game where all your attacks involved a warp prism. That's right, when we make verbal typos, we roll with it, because this is live. Involving all the warp priming, that's right. You can maybe warp in enemy units. If you're hacking, see we rolled with it. You can warp in gateway units. You can drop any unit you want. You just can't attack the front. And the games that we got made made sense. No, mm -mm. nope, didn't. So we're gonna watch them in order. I'm in a pretty good mood, as you can tell. Um, Funny Monday's back. So thrilled to have you. I was on a vacation for a long time which largely involved me trying to figure out how to unwind, which I'm not actually very good at, because I get up on Saturday morning and I'm like, all right, what are we going to do today to make ourselves happy? Maybe read a book? Okay, when are we going to schedule in that book reading? Then I go to Google Calendar, I like mark out like one to three is going to be book reading. That'll give me enough time to get back from lunch. We're going to put that in there. I think red is a good color for the book because that's a very passionate section. Last I read, Thomas was really upset at Harry because he didn't give good notification for when he went away for a long time. And Thomas hugged Harry and I felt a little bit emotional. I'm gonna definitely make that red. And all of a sudden, I've been staring at my Google Calendar trying to schedule things for a while and I've realized I haven't successfully unwound. And then I said, look, I'm not gonna do any more scheduling. I'm just gonna do something really fun and relaxing on an impulse. So I drafted in magic, and guess what I didn't draw? Land. Let's go ahead and uh, hop into the show. Let's go ahead and do it. I'm glad to be back. Oh, I'm so glad that I have returned to StarCraft II Fun Day Monday Edge casting because, goodness, this is a lot more reliable than any mana base. Up in the top left hand corner. We have not an A scalp, but a B scalp. Perhaps he's O positive for scalp, we just don't know. Up in the top right, we have SOFTN. Symphony of fucking the night, Fluffy. Up in the top right hand corner with his have fun, have fun. Uh, double cat, whiskers, happy face, hi, thanks, comma, you too, B scalp. Doesn't like to capitalize, but likes to know when he's giving one pause. Map is going to be Habitation Station. Now, normally what we'd do is we'd be like, Oh, on Habitation Station, there's a gold minerals and derp do. We have all sorts of cool strategies that transition into us. But the really salient point is the fact that B Scout is responding with a face after some deliberation time. There's two times in which it takes a little while to respond via text. One is if you have a crush on the other person, and the second is if you're in a game. We're going to go ahead and assume that B-Scalp is in love. We're going to assume that B-Scalp saw a little happy face his way and was like, I'm going to put a happy face. Which one? I can't put one that's too similar because then I'll look like a copy. Oh, God. All the tension, all the heart poundy poundies, B-Scalp. Really feeling it for Fluffy right now. A little bit of lols. A friendship's forming. You can smell the mist in the air. It's condensing on my skin. B-Scalp going for the wall off. If it's a smiley competition with a winky face. Oh! Oh my god. Oh. In Mortal Kombat, they don't flirt. Although that would be an innovative technique. A six-button grid where one of them is flirt. And all anyone actually does is spam that button because they say, Feelings are OP. Oh. Actually, I'm sorry. I'm using the wrong verbiage for the fighting game community. Isn't it feelings, uh, feelings top tier? Did I do it? I don't know, I'm a StarCraft nerd. Forgive me, forgive me, fighting game community. I don't mean to be so phony. The important thing is that Fluffy's typing a happy face or a half-amputated penis. He's really into the crush mode. So he's gonna go ahead and warp in a gateway. Perhaps as 
a man with a throbbing heart or with throbbing regret. We just don't know. Feelings top tier. B-Scalp is continuing to build himself a collection of SCVs to add to his mineral investment. We're seeing Fluffy with a wall off that resembles a Bronze League from Wings of Liberty wall off. But that's okay! But that's okay because in Fun Day Monday, we overlook all problems and get to the core of the romance that's going on between these two. It doesn't matter if you say, see a red flag. Perhaps a red flag like this. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean by red flags. You know what I mean. When you meet that special someone. Girls have had it happen to them. Boys have had it happen to them. When you're seeing someone and they say, Oh, God, I really hate drama. And your skin goes, Uh-oh. Oh, shit, what does that mean? I mean, I know everyone doesn't like drama, but nobody nobody says it. Nobody says it. That's like if I came up to you and said, Man, I hate chewing on an eight-year-old's hair. You probably hate that too, but you don't say it. You don't verbalize that out loud. Now, here's the thing. I know cannons are an important defensive structure, but that, that doesn't mean... That doesn't mean that you actually build the fucking cannons, okay? That's not what that means. I understand that, you know, a cannon is about the cost of a stalker and does more damage than a stalker. But if you're walling yourself off with a forge and you're gonna build a cannon behind it, I'm like, I'm like worried. I'm like concerned. We see Fluffy going for the cybernetics core though. I'm happy with it. Fluffy now. Getting himself his next eye probes up. Be scalp. <laughs> I love the delayed reaction from chat. <laughs> B scalp getting his command center up. He's getting an expansion, but what do you know? It's a three minute and fifty second robotics facility. We don't usually see that timing on a robotics facility because typically there's a nexus going down, but Fluffy is dedicated to his fun day Monday edge. Fluffy knows what's up. Fluffy is about to swoop in and backdoor the romance going on between himself and B-Scout. Oh, baby, baby, baby. Thanks, chat. We see a stalker en route. Fluffy's walled himself off, which will successfully prevent Zerglings from getting in. Whoa! Looks like the Stalker is protecting any sort of Reapers from getting in on this right side. It's going to patrol every which way because the patrol button is a key in StarCraft II Fluffy. Getting himself a Warp Prism. Getting himself that. Oh, Warp Gate. It's going to work well with this a uh, Gateway. And this a uh, Plus One Forge. Mm-mm-mm. Oh, wait. Never mind. It's going to be a trio of Gateways slipping in. B-Scalp is actually doing a fairly, <gasps> excuse me, standard build, tech lab, reactor, ooh, a tech lab here as well. B-Scalp has made a wall off. He's feeling confident. He's thinking, if I can just get enough bio up, there's nothing I can't handle. Except B-Scalp has an SCV, who's noticed a salient aspect. There's absolutely no expansion. Hmm... It looks like Fluffy is going to bring everything but the Immortal, who's like, Wait, 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 I didn't know, I didn't run track, I'm out of shape. And here he goes, he's going to try to get out, but really we see the purpose of this Zealot, to block the Immortals in. You will stay here in the main base. Fluffy's moving in. Oh no, the warp in play gets spotted by the Marines. Whatever will he do? He's going to wait for plus one ground weapons, and now he moves in. The moment to strike... Oh, the juke! The juke! Oh my god, B-Scalp's three-second emotional lag time. He's gonna spend the next shower thinking of all the things he could have done to stop... I mean, this strategy from going on. Alright, he's warp-prismed his way into a photon cannon and a pylon. And, uh... And, uh... Photon cannon... And a robotics facility! 
outplayed. I mean, <laughs> I mean, no one ever expects the robo in the back door. Ever. That's a technique that the true love B-Scout would never suspect. They've been having themselves a little smiley face flirtation war. And all of a sudden, Fluffy shows up and is like, Hey, I'm gonna build a home here. And B-Scout's like, Um, alright. Alright, okay. You know, I wanna, I wanna talk about something that I actually talked about in, uh, in a previous daily. Well, looks like we're seeing a lot of damage go down. I don't actually feel like being particularly on topic today, which, as I understand, is one of my oft-requested <laughs> behaviors. Sean, can you just go, go on tangents, please? Alright, here's the thing. Here's the thing. I think I've spoken about this before, that when I was... When I was a wee lad, the first toy I ever received was a bicycle. It was leg-powered freedom. I could go anywhere that I wanted to. And I biked a lot, like 15 to 20 miles a day, minimum, and more on the weekends. Like, many hours a day of biking. But not on trails, just like in suburbs, going up to people's houses I went to school with and being like, I guess David lives there. I don't know why I would do that. They would probably just look out the window and see me just sitting there with a helmet because I was a safe bicyclist. And this continued into middle school. And I used to go up to people and say, hey, do you bike? And they'd be like, I mean, I know how to ride a bicycle. I'm like, yes, but do you do it actively? Because if I biked to your house and wanted to take you to a Pokemon tournament, would you be able to accompany me? So, I used to actually do this. I would literally look up in the school phone directory the address occasionally of a girl I liked, and I would just show up to their house. I would just knock on the door, and a mom would answer, and I'd be like, hey, I'm Sean. I have leg-powered freedom, so I'm here now. Please bring your daughter. Let's get the daughter out here. And as insane and creepy as that sounds, it's nothing compared to the 16 and 1700s, when they had what was called a calling card. Now, I want to step back to the 16 and 1700s. I want you to think about what you do now. If you like someone, you may be like a status on Facebook. Maybe you favorite a tweet or some shit. Maybe you text, sup, and you know, you have a very indirect way of lightly talking to the other person. Did you, do you call them on the phone? No, 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 you have your roundabout social media. That's all social media really is. It's a roundabout way to talk to someone like a normal fucking person, because it's too scary to talk to someone like a normal person. So we have mechanics, like upvotes. But don't worry, because even though that might seem awkward, it's nothing compared to the 16 and 1700s when you didn't really have that. If you fancied a girl, you know what you did? You just fucking showed up to her house. You just showed up. And oftentimes, she wouldn't have anything to do throughout the day. She would... Like, here was a normal thing. People would just have tea ready in case somebody showed up. Oh my god, sometimes people would bake scones in case in case their true love showed up. Now let me tell you something. Sometimes, if I fancy a fancy lady, I'll make sure my Skype status isn't on Do Not Disturb. Sometimes I'll change my info to something like hanging out at home on the weekend. You think I'm weird? Fuck you, you do this too. Right? Like that's the way that you invite communication, but way back in the 16 and 1700s. T. And you'd just stare at it, wondering if it would ever have a home. And when the day was through, you'd have to dump your hot tea out. Because your true love, Winston Rutherford III Jr., didn't show up. And you know what's, what's way more fucked up is the guy had what's called a calling card. And, I mean, this is like 
commonly used like, oh yeah, that's Batman's calling card and all that stuff. But there was, you'd get a card that said, I showed up and no one was here. And you'd like leave it in a basket at the front of the house. (laughs) You know, if I went up to someone's house and like knocked and they didn't answer, I would probably take that information to the grave. I'd be like, I don't know, I was I was feeling really insecure and I just went to their house and knocked and I don't know, I'm really ashamed of the entire thing. But in the 16 and 1700s, you'd print out like a card that had to be like shung, like embalmed with ink. They were expensive and you'd have your pack of cards and be like, oh, I jolly well hope I don't have to use one of these. <gasps> oh. Prudence Chastity Guddleson is the woman for whom I have such love. I hopeth that she doth answer the door. And then she wouldn't, and you'd be like, Oh, bugger, ball sack. I don't know how they cursed in the 1700s. And you'd, you'd put the... You'd put the card in the basket. And then they'd come home and be like, Jesus, Sean stopped by sometime today. Ugh. Ugh. Oh, God. And what if I left more calling cards? Have you ever had, like, unresponded to texts where when you scroll through, it's all the other person? Imagine a stack of calling cards. Isn't that terrifying? Either way, we are on a crazy tangent right now. But here's the thing. Here's Fluffy, who had some emoticon flirting and is like, Do you mind if I, you know, snuggle up and get a base next to your base? Oh, Prudence Chastity Guttelson, I'm so excited because I'm going to buy a manor next to your manor, which means our lawns and our slaves will be next to each other. Perhaps we should encounter each other more frequently. P.S. I have a horse. Again, I don't really know how people spoke back then, but I assume that horses were, like, a thing then and shit. I have a Honda. (laughs) Anyways... There's a robo being built in this base, and I can't explain that. This is culturally odd for me. Was Pr- was Prudence was Prudence Chastity a name back then? I don't really know. I think Prudence Chastity was probably. Mm, I'm I'm certain that was a name in the 16 and 17 hundreds. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> Oh, I've elected to move to the mountains with you, Prudence Chastity. I've elected to build cannons up straight on your lawn. <laughs> oh, oh, don't worry, I'm not a plebeian. I've learned how to read. Mm. What do you think of the straps on my vest? They're quite strapping and dashing, aren't they? Oh, you removed my cannons. Don't worry, I'm going to build an immortal. Oh, oh, oh. here comes the immortal. I mean, I know I've, I've derailed this heavily, but the fact of the matter is that Fluffy is chrono-boosting the robotics facility in B-Scalp's main base to get an immortal faster. Zealots and stalkers being built a little bit at a time. Being built in trios, only to be joined by an immortal. An immortal dedicated to removing reactors from the face of the planet. (laughs) I don't know if you came here for StarCraft. I don't know if you came here for Tangents. But you're almost certainly going to obtain both. B-Scalp is trying to remove all the workers to prevent the onslaught. Tell him to go away! I don't even know what's happening, I don't know what's going on, but I do know that this immortal... <laughs> Day 9 made me do it! Oh, ho, ho, ho. Now that I perceive myself to be winning, I'm going to make a funny joke. Mm. Oh, 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 suddenly that friendship turned into muted silence. Oh, goodness, suddenly... Suddenly all that flirting and that winking, if it's a smiley competition, suddenly it turned in to what it's always been. Someone with their computer going, Oh my fuck! It's a robo! And when the robo's done and it gets chrono boosted, you know B-Scout thought, No! (coughs) (coughs) 
Huh. Uh, B Scalp is a chain smoker. I don't know why he coughs like that. But we have seen Fluffy successfully win the game. <sighs> Sorry, I'm recovering from an illness. <sighs> uh, and when we come back, we'll see games only worse than this one for this week's Fun Day Monday. <clears throat> 